Just a quick reminder that there are still places available on the photography workshop in Tasmania coming up in July that I'm running with Andrew Dawes. So if you are interested, check out the details on my website. The link is in the description below. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, a domain, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Good morning. We had a very cold night last night down at Derwent River. It was so cold, we actually experienced falling snow, which for me, is only the second time I've ever experienced falling snow before so it was just magical so we've driven about an hour further south to a place called Tara Lee and we're in search of the Tara Lee Falls Tara Lee is a old historic town built around the hydro scheme in Tasmania so the first thing you notice as you're driving into town are these massive big water pipes taking the water through to the turbines so the controversy here is the water has actually been diverted from the falls themselves so the falls probably should be bigger than what they're going to be even though we haven't reached there yet so we don't know how big the falls are a lot of the water has been diverted to the hydro system. Of course if you've been following the last couple of videos where I've been taking pictures of falls you'll notice that the falls at the moment are big because it's winter, it's the wet season and there's been lots of rain lately. In fact there's been so much water in these waterfalls there's been a little bit of a challenge to photograph. So a waterfall with a little less water, in my book, might be a good thing. We'll have to wait and see. The walk in is quite interesting. Reasonably flat, which is pretty good given my knee at the moment. Uh, touch wood. The forest is a little bit different to the ones that we've been through in the previous couple of days. Not so much a rainforest with those big fern trees, but uh, more of a woodland, I'd say. Having said that, right at the right point of time, here are some couple of fern trees to my right, and I'm just so impressed with them. I, I love these sorts of trees, they're, uh, they're fantastic and they give that kind of enchanted feel to the forest. Uh, it's one thing that Tasmanian forests are known for, are these uh, fern trees. 
of course the moss as well. Anyway, I'll stop talking. We'll see how we go. I'll see you down there. All right, so I've made it down nice and safe. Disappointingly, the path leads to a lookout. So that's what I'm standing on at the moment. You can see it's quite a decent, uh, decent lookout with uh, a wire fence around it to prevent anybody falling off, which is all good. The challenges with a situation like this is compositionally, there's not a lot of creative options. Pretty much what I've started off doing is coming out to the furthest corner closest to the waterfall and uh, I've set up my tripod. The challenge of course with a fence or a railing this high is that if I set up my tripod traditionally with the three legs I get the top of the railing in the shot. So what I've done is I've just pushed that up against the fence and that back leg here that I'm holding, I'll just push that down so that it's up against the, the floor there. And that seems to be holding it quite nicely. The third challenge is if anybody else decides to walk along the platform, the whole thing starts to shake. So at the moment, Richard and Andrew are doing me a favor. They've just stepped off the platform and it's allowed me to take a series of photos. Luckily the place isn't all that busy, we haven't seen anybody else, so chances are we're not going to get anybody else from the public standing on the platform, so we should be able to have a pretty free go at taking our images. I just wanted to take you through my, my thinking when I come to a situation like this where uh, I'm trying to work out what lens or what filters to use. So to start off with, because we're this far away from the waterfall, I decided to grab the 24 to 70. At the moment, my focal length is 24 and I'm getting quite a good composition with the edge of this gorge. Um, it's covered in moss and some of the rock is bare. So I'm just getting that uh, contrast in texture and the gorge kind of hoops around or loops around which creates a nice leading line predominantly from the right hand corner. In the left I've managed to grab some of the ferns. We're looking down onto the waterfall so there's some ferns right at the bottom of the gorge and that's filling the bottom left hand of my image and then I've of course I've got the waterfall itself and that is smack bang in the middle of my image and I've got a little bit of the bush just in the background there. So what I did with my aperture is I started off at f8, uh, my ISO was 64 which is the base ISO for this camera and I looked at what shutter speed that gave me. And it was around about uh, 1 uh, 1 15th, 1 13th of a second which is a little bit too quick for this water, it, it uh, doesn't allow the water to have traveled quick enough during that exposure, so it's just not soft enough. It's just a little bit too much detail. Uh, as I've said several times before, my, my go-to shutter speed is around about one third. Many of you ask me uh, what shutter speed I use for capturing waterfalls. It does depend on how fast the water is moving, generally, if you're at the beach or at the waterfall. This is a reasonably tall waterfall, so it does take a little bit of time for the water to travel from the top of the waterfall to the bottom. So I, I aimed at around about one quarter, one third of a second, and then I've just slowly uh, built up. So how did I get my shutter speed to one third or one quarter of a second? Well, I have to cut out light. And the simplest way to do that is to make sure, of course, that I've got not only my circular polarizer on, which cuts out the glare, against the rock but it also cuts out a couple of stops which is good. I've also got my little stopper, my Lee Pro Glass little stopper at the front there. That really gives me 18 stops 
Now that alone will, without changing anything else, will give me a shutter speed that is probably too long. Around about the top of my head, I think it's around about three seconds. So I need to compensate for that. So what I did was I changed my ISO from the base ISO of 64, which is where I started, and I moved it to around about 200, 250, which is still gonna give me a nice clean image. I also stopped down my aperture. As I said, I was on F8, and I moved it from F8 to F5.6. Because I'm so far away, I don't need a very large depth of field. Um, since that, I've moved it to F uh, 6.3 so there's no magic number here there's no magic formula for trying to work out what the right settings are my starting point is f8 base ISO and I have in my mind when it comes to water if I'm going to capture that that moving water around about a third to a quarter maybe a half a second and I add filters accordingly to control that light uh, and once the filter's on, adjust my settings uh, to, to account for the amount of light that I've cut out of the scene. It's different for every situation, for every location. I don't follow that same exact process, but it's generally what I do. Start off at a certain point and then adjust accordingly. But I just thought I'd talk you through that in a little bit more detail, uh, just to help you uh, understand the sort of thought process I go through in trying to work out the most appropriate camera settings. I'll stop talking and I'll start taking some pictures and I'll show you what I've captured now. So because this is actually quite a tall waterfall, it's taking a little bit longer for the water to travel from the top of the waterfall down to the bottom. So I can afford to have a shutter speed that is longer than a third of a second. So I'm experimenting with shutter speeds right up to a second and even over a second. I think I've even taken a shot at two seconds and two and a half seconds. And because of the amount of water that's flowing through the waterfall, there's not a lot, uh, a two second or even a two and a half second uh, shutter speed is quite nice. I'm still getting some detail in that water, which is really important. So the sun has just come out again. The light is a little bit harsh, so I just thought I would talk you through a slightly different composition that uh, that I've come up with here. I've taken off the 14 to 70 and I've put on the 17 to 35 and I'm as wide as I can get at 17 mil. I've still got the curve of the gorge on the right hand side and I've got the waterfall in the top third, pretty much in the center. After the waterfall, the water flows down a river that goes in the image, goes out to the left hand side. So that creates a little bit of a leading line in from the left hand corner. Also down at the bottom, slightly to the left, following on from the waterfall, is this group of Tasmanian fern trees. And of course the perspective that we're getting is a top down view of these trees and they look amazing. So I've still got the polarizer on, I've still got the uh, six stop, little stopper from Lee on the front of the lens. I'm at ISO 200, I might actually change that and see what happens as the light is increasing. I'll bring that ISO closer to 100 or 64. Uh, and my shutter speed is at a second. And of course with this waterfall, a shutter speed of a second, giving that water enough time to, to move down the length of the waterfall is, is actually proving to be quite effective I think so I'll take that shot so we can have a look at it
we just finished up there. It was a really good shoot. As frustrating as it might have been because there wasn't many options in terms of where we could position our cameras. It was a lot of fun, quite enjoyable. For starters, it wasn't raining, so we didn't have that challenge. I'm really keen to see the images that we've ended up with. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you don't know who Squarespace are, you should check them out. They provide an online platform that makes it really easy to build a website. I've been using Squarespace for years. I recommend them to all my friends. And the reason why I love Squarespace is they're always updating it with new templates and features, and I don't have to worry about any of the updates. They take care of everything. Go to squarespace.com for a free month trial. And if you do check them out and you want to go ahead with a website, make sure you go to squarespace.com forward slash Andrew Marr to get 10% off your first purchase. So we're just um, packing up now. Uh, Andrew has taken off. He's, uh, I think he's going to start cooking lunch, which is fantastic. That'll He'll, be nice, won't it? <laughs> it is. It's uh, fantastic what he, um, what, what he cooks. And it's always nice to have a uh, hot cooked meal <laughs> when we get back to the van. Uh, so how'd you go, Richard? What did you think? Oh, look, not bad. I, mean, I, I'm, I was just trying to think how many waterfalls have we hit now since we've been here. Oh, There's been a few. Countless. There's been a few. Yeah. So I'm going to say I was a little less inspired with this one than others. But even still, it's you know it's pretty impressive when you when you compare it to what we're used to from back home. Isn't absolutely, it? absolutely. Like we've got little creeks in comparison to these rivers yeah. and really impressive waterfalls. As I said before, a um, little bit challenging with the options you had with composition, but on the bright side, good weather conditions, <laughs> no rain, barely any mist was coming off the uh, the waterfall, so we were able to take our time. And I think with that. We're able to pick up a couple of different uh, images, so oh, we, I certainly had fun. We were due for conditions like that, weren't we? It's we been were. a tough slog. The last couple of days yeah. have certainly been tough. Uh, the last in the last video, uh, you might have seen, I got completely drenched uh, from the waterfall. So yes, uh, <laughs> it's just good to be able to walk away dry. So we've got a uh, bit of a, a walk ahead of us, um, but then it's uh, back to the van, warm up, and on to the next location. Let's do it. So head on over to Richard Lefroy's channel to check out his version of this little trip. Uh, he's got some uh, fantastic videos over there and uh, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And of course, Andrew, who's already headed off, make sure you go over to his channel and check out what he's doing over there. Like and subscribe.